So, it's time for you to write your citation page. You've been hearing rumors that MLA format has changed with version 8 and you don't know what's different. Don't worry, everything is going to be fine. MLA 8 works cited pages have been changed a little and we're going to walk you through what the new elements are in a citation and where you find them. Let's do it. No matter what kind of source you have, the new MLA 8 has basic elements you're looking for. Those elements are author, title of source, title of container, other contributors, version, number, publisher, publication date, secondary container, location, page numbers, and date accessed. Now let's break them down one at a time and figure out where to find them. The author is pretty easy to find. It will be on the cover or spine of the book. If it's an article in a newspaper, magazine, or journal, it's the name or names after the title. For MLA, you want to write the author name in the last name, comma, first name order. If you have two authors, the first one is last name, comma, first name, then the second one is normal order. And if you have three or more, you simply do the first author, last name, comma, first name, then the words, et al., which stands in in place of all the other names. The title of source is the name of the article, journal entry, movie, book, etc. For books and movies, you simply write the title in italics like this, The Sound and the Fury, or Mary Poppins. If, however, the title is an article or journal entry, or anything small that is inside of a larger element, like a single short story in a book of short stories, then you write the title in quotes. So if you have a book of Edgar Allan Poe stories and you're citing just one story, then you would write the title of the story like this, quote, The Cask of Amontillado. What is a container? Well, you remember a minute ago when we talked about a short story in an Edgar Allan Poe book? Well, the story is inside the book, so the book is the container. It's the same with an article in a newspaper. If what you are quoting is a smaller piece of something larger, then the larger thing is your container. So this one is simple. Is there anyone who didn't write the book but who did contribute in another way? This is where their names go. So if the book has an editor, it would appear here. If the book was originally in another language and has been translated, the translator's name would appear here. The listing for version and number, this is for sources that have multiple volumes. This includes magazines as well as literary and science journals. Here, you'll simply put the numbers listed for each. Finding the publisher is easy. In a book, it's usually on one of the first few pages before the text of the book starts. On a website, the publisher is usually located all the way down at the bottom of the page. Look for the copyright year, which looks like this. The name of the publisher should be right after the year. The publication date is when the book or article was released, not when you found it. The release date will be found close to the publisher information in a book. In an online article, the date will usually come under the headline alongside the author's name or sometimes at the bottom of an article. Remember, the format for dates in MLA is day, then month, then year, with no commas in between. Wait, what's a secondary container? Well, it sounds complicated, but it's pretty simple. It's the container that your container is inside. If you're quoting a magazine article, then the magazine is the container. But if you found the magazine in a database, like the ones you have access to through the Valencia Library, then the database is the secondary container. This is also the place where you would list a movie database, like Netflix, Hulu, or Amazon Prime. Location is only necessary for online resources. This is where you put the URL, or the web address, which gives your professor the ability to find the article online if necessary. This is self-explanatory. You write the page range here. If it's only one page, you just put one P before it. If it's multiple pages, you put two P's. This is primarily for books, magazines, and journals, as websites are rarely divided up by page numbers. This is where you put the date that you found and used an article, as opposed to the earlier date you noted, which was when the article was published. You note the access date here in the event that if the article is ever altered, you have noted that your information came before the article alteration. And that's it. Those are all the parts of MLA 8. Keep in mind, not all of them are used for every source. 
For online sources, you don't need a page number. For book sources, you don't need a location web address. So include only the information required for each kind of source. And in the event that you can't find a certain piece of information, simply leave it out and continue on to the next piece of information. Some old rules do still apply though. You still want them listed on a separate page titled Works Cited, you still want all your entries to be in alphabetical order, and you still want the entries to be formatted with hanging indents. So now you have everything you need to get your Works Cited page in great shape. If you need more help, come down to the Writing Center in Building 4.